All right, guys. So in this video, we're gonna continue with chapter three lectures. Um, three point two. The topic is derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, there are a lot of applications uh, that uses exponential exponential uh, model, and as well as logarithmic as well. Um, however, the base that we're gonna focus on for exponential functions. So, just to quickly recall that. If you have a function that is in the form of a to the x, right? So this is where a is a is not equal to zero, a is not equal to one. Uh, where an x is any real number, then this here this is considered as a, a exponential function. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna look at application that uses exponential function, but the base we look at we only focus on when the base is, you know, is on when exponential function with base e. In the previous video we introduced the uh, the constant e already, so that's around two point seven two. Um, so you know you there is a derivative formula for the general exponential function as well. But at least for this class, we're not going to revolve around that. Mainly, we're going to focus on e to the x, and then the inverse function of e to the x we be uh, natural of x, okay? Um, but before we uh, get to how to uh, derive or find the derivative of uh, e to the x function, um, we need to uh, look at a certain limit that will help us derive the formula for derivative of e to the x. Um, so let's just go ahead and say, okay, derivative, derivative of e to the x function, okay, all right, first we need, first we need, we need to, you know, uh, find the limit of this expression, this quote, this quotient of this function here, uh, limit as h approaches zero, um, of the function e to the h minus 1 over h, and we, we need to figure out what this equal to, okay? Um, so, at least in this class, the way we introduce limit or just kind of basic concept limit is, you know, as the input values are approaching a certain number, we are observing the behavior of the y values or the output. Uh, are there any patterns at all? Do the y values or do the outputs approaching a certain number? Uh, so for a problem like this here, we don't know what the graph looks like. We can graph it and see what the limit is approaching, but if we don't know anything about the graph, you know, it's it's always safe to to start out by you know picking some numbers from both the left and right side of um, eight, uh, zero and see what the uh, output is is approaching. Okay, so you know if we want to evaluate limit as h goes to zero. You know, we can pick some numbers that to the left of zero and then to the right of zero. So maybe maybe negative one point uh point one and then negative point oh one, negative point oh oh one. So this this would be the left side of zero, and then maybe maybe look at uh point oh oh one on the right, right, and and see, you know, and see what. The y values are doing is it what is it approaching? So it turns out if we do this here, um, the y values are approaching a number, and then that's gonna be one. So I'll let you guys verify that on on your own. Um, so now we have we have this uh, this limit here. Okay, so it's gonna be one. Right. So the limit of this quotient here, as h goes to zero, is gonna be one. So now we're ready to derive the formula of um, e to the x, derivative of e to the x. So using a definition, so using uh, definition of uh, derivative. Okay, uh, we know that we know that f prime of x is equal to the limit of h go to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, and since our function our function is e to the x, so f of x plus h now become e to the x plus h minus f of x will be e to the x over h. Okay. All right. So then uh, we are evaluating the limit uh, according to the 
or with respect to the h variable. So um, what we can do here on the numerator is that uh, rewrite this e to the x, uh, x plus h as e to the x times e to the h using properties of exponent. Um, and then that allows us to factor out uh, e to the x, and then that gives us e to the h minus 1 in the numerator. And then over h since since the limit is is depends on the variable h the x is not being affected so the variable x here can be factored out as a constant and then we have e to the h minus 1 over h and then that's the limit that we try and evaluate and we just we just did that we 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 showed that the limit as as h goes to 0 e to the h minus 1 over h this right here become 1 Okay, so we just have e to the x times 1, which is e to the x. So that imply that, you know, if the function is e to the x, then the derivative function of that e to the x function is just going to be itself, which is kind of neat. Okay. All right. Um, we can do similar methods, sort of not so much the same, but a little bit more difficult to show the derivative of the logarithmic function of base e. Um, so we know that we know f of x equal to natural log of x is the inverse of e to the x. Okay. Um, so it, you know, it can be shown, it can be shown that, you know, if the function is natural log of x, then f prime of x is 1 over the argument. The argument is going to be the input here. So that's the second rule that you want to remember for this, at least for this lesson. Okay. Um, you know, there, there are more generic rules for exponential and logarith logarithmic functions, uh, how to find their derivative. But again, in this class, most applications we're dealing with are um, using the uh, exponential base e and natural log function. Um, so that, that's, that's the only two formula we focus on, and that's all I'm asking you to remember for this class. So we were ready to apply these two new rule of derivative to do some example. Okay, so let's do some examples. Let's see. Uh, let's do this one. Example one. Where's my example? Okay, let me just go ahead and cut this here. All right, let's do this. Example one. Okay, so let's find the derivative of the given function. Okay, so a uh, f prime of x. Okay, so we know that the derivative of e to x can be e to x. The constant can just be multiplied to the derivative of e to the x. So in this case, it can be the same thing for the first term, okay? Uh, ax squared using the rule from the previous chapter, that's become 16x, the power rule of, uh, is being used there. And then 7x, the derivative of that is gonna be seven. And then the derivative of a constant, which is um, gonna be zero here uh, for that one. So that is the answer, four e to the x plus 16x plus seven. All right. Um, over here, um, when we take the derivative of negative seven x to the e, so remember e is approximately two point seven two. Okay, so really this first term of oh, that is just negative seven x to the power of two point seven two. Okay, so uh, we're not really using the derivative of e function in this case, but we are using the power rule, uh, derivative rule to really simplify the first term here. So f prime of x become negative seven times e because the power comes down and then e minus one because that's what the uh, power rule is stating, okay? Then the derivative of two e to x gonna be two e to the x. And then the derivative of e squared, well, e is a constant, it's not a variable x. This function depends on the variable x. So e is 2.72, so e squared it's approximately eight something. I don't know. I can't do this in my head right now, but it's just a number. So the derivative of any constant, we learn that that's zero. Okay. So the answer is negative seven e x to the e minus one plus two times uh, e to the x. Okay. 
Let's do some more example with natural log. Okay. Uh, let's do. Let's do this one. <clears throat> All right. Um, find the derivative. We have the first one as 10x to the third minus 1,100 times natural log of x. So derivative is the first term, we apply the power rule, so that becomes 30x squared. And second one, we just leave the constant alone, multiply the derivative of that, it's one over x. So we're looking at 30x squared minus 100 over x as the y prime of that function. Okay. Um, part B, um, well, you know, we know we know the derivative. We know what d dx of natural law of natural law of x is, which is one over x. But we don't know the derivative of x to the fifth. Well, not yet. Um, in the next couple of lesson, we're gonna introduce another rule called the chain rule. Um, but in this lesson here, we have to rely on our uh, 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 properties of logarithm, um, and that is. The first thing we want to do is rewrite these guys as uh, different forms, so allow us to chain this natural log of x to the fifth to something like this, where we can take the derivative. So one of the roof of of um, uh, uh, one of the properties of lo a logarithm was you know if you have log base a of x to the n power, uh, this is the same thing as n times log base a of x. So this this is one of the properties of logarithm. And that was, I think that was the power rule for logarithm. So in this case here, I can bring down the phi in the front. Okay, so that's that's just rewriting. We haven't quite taken the derivative yet, okay? And then this here, this, it looks like it's, it's you know, it's just natural or something, but it turns out this is just, this is just two actually. Um, you know, what, what power e raised to to get e squared? So in this case, just two there. Okay, uh, natural log of e squared is just gonna be two. Um, so nothing to do there when you take the derivative, it just becomes zero. So now we're gonna take the derivative. So y prime um, is equal to phi. Oh, I think when I brought the power down, this phi goes away because by properties of logarithm, the power goes down. So now we're going to take the, the derivative of phi natural log of x. So that's just phi times 1 over x. And then the derivative of e to the x is going to be e to the x. And the derivative of negative 2 is going to be constant. So it's going to be 0, right? So final answer is phi over x plus e to the x. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's do an example. Oh, let's do this word problem here. Okay. Next example. Okay. So this one's saying that an investment of 1,000 earn an interest at an annual rate of 4% compounded continuously. Part A, find the instantaneous rate of change of the amount in the account after two years. Um, so we know that compounding interest rate formula is is a equal to p times e to the rt from the previous lesson. Um, so part a, we know that we give in an investment, which is initial principal, 1,000, okay, earn an annual interest of 4%, okay, and it's compounded continuously, therefore it's e to the rt, okay. Um, so find the instantaneous rate of change in the account after two years. So that means, so the instantaneous, instantaneous rate of change, if you remember from lesson 2.4, that's the first formal name, you know, that's the first formal name of derivative. So it's asking us to find the derivative, um, how much is the amount in the account changing after two years? So this is asking for a prime when the year is two. That's, that's what it's asking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We write this as a 
1000, which is P, E to the 0.04 T. Okay. Um, so when we learn the chain rule, we can actually take the derivative of E to the AT, but I'm just going to go ahead and give you on the side here. So this would be a no rule for this section. So if you have a function that is E to the AX, where the power now has a coefficient in front of X, then the derivative is going to be a times e to the ax. And we can show that when we get to the chain rule there. Um, so now this here is the equation that we're given. So a of t. Okay. So we can take the derivative. So that means a prime of t is, is 1000 times 0 0.04 e to the 0.04 t right, using this rule here. So that gives us a prime of t is um, 40 e to the point oh four t and then we can figure out what that amount is changing what is the instantaneous rate chain when the t or the the year is two years later okay and then figure out what that is so we have um, e to the power point oh four times two and then times one thousand times forty so that's about $43.33 per year. Okay. So the rate of change in the account after two years is that it's increasing by $43 per year if we invest $1,000 at 4% compounded continuously. Part B, this is asking for find the instantaneous rate of change of the amount in, in the account at the time when the amount is equal to 2000 um, so that is a bit unclear than part a um, we are asking to find the derivative but it said find the derivative uh, when at the time when the amount is equal to 2000 um, so okay so this saying that fine See if we can get this correct. Find a prime of t when, when, when a of t, which is the amount of count, is is two thousand dollars. All right, because a of t is the amount in the account. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, there's a long way and there's a short way. Okay, the long way is we find out what year, what year the amount, what year it takes for. Uh, $1,000 to reach $2,000 and then plug in that year for the you know the T here and get the instantaneous rate of change at that, uh, that, uh, that time or what we can do here we can observe this okay we we'll say note that note okay a prime of T is, is, is right here okay a prime of T is 1000 times 0.04 e to the 0.04t, rewrite this as 0.04 times 1000 e to the 0.04t, okay? Now take a look at this. That right there, what is that? That is the uh, a of t itself. So a of t is equal to this, right? That is a of t itself. So it looks like the instantaneous rate of chain of a compound continuous formula is equal to the annual rate times the amount of the account or it is proportional to um, you know it's increasing by uh, how much is the annual percent rate is, which is which just makes sense that's what the annual uh, interest rate is is for um, so we have this here right so we have that note there all right so now to find out what well, how fast the amount is increasing when this is 2000 we can say now okay, when a of t is two thousand dollars in the account at that time okay the amount count is increasing eight dollars per year so we said when there are there is two thousand dollars in the account 
the amount is increasing at a rate of $80 per year. Okay, and that's how we interpret that answer.